Hello everyone, my name is Zach Peterson and welcome to another Flux tutorial. Today I'm going to show you how to create a custom symbol for your components in Flux. I'm also going to give you some pointers on how to organize the pins on your symbol when you're inside of Flux. These same guidelines pretty much apply generally to any other CAD tool that you're going to use. Now, before you get started in Flux, I recommend you go and download Inkscape. There is a link in the description of the video. Inkscape is a free SVG editor. You're going to need it in order to create custom symbols for your components. Make sure to go download that and then hop into Flux and follow along. In this tutorial, we are going to look at how to create custom symbols. But before we jump into the tutorial, there are a couple of things to note here. So the first thing to note is that you don't have to create custom symbols for your components. Flux does have a feature built into it that will create a default symbol, even if you don't create your own symbol. So if you don't create a symbol yourself, once you publish that part to the library, and then you import that part into a new project and start using it in the schematics, you will see the default symbol and pin arrangement populate in the schematics. The other thing to note is that if you want to create a part with a custom symbol, you can actually reuse a part that already has a custom symbol. So this is pretty common with like transistors. Let's say you want to create a new transistor part, but you don't want to have to recreate the custom symbol for that transistor. What you can do is go into the library, find a transistor that has the symbol you want, and then clone that part. When you clone that part, you will also clone the symbol, and that custom symbol will be used in your new part. So before you get started creating custom symbols, I think it helps to actually look at an existing component and by looking at an existing component, you can kind of decode how the symbol is created and how the pins are placed on that symbol. So that way the symbol is actually wireable once you put it into a new project. So here in Flux, I've opened up this project. This is the FJD5553TM part. And this part is searchable inside the public library. I actually forked it from this user. And you can see here in the right side of the screen, we have a symbol for this part. Here we have all of the pins laid out. Now anyone that knows an NPN transistor and the terminals on an NPN transistor knows that this arrangement of pins in this schematic drawing does not match the actual placement of those pins on this symbol. So the base would be right here. That means here in this list of pins, you should have the base right here. So that's kind of important because you have the freedom to arrange the pins in this schematic area for this part and they don't necessarily have to match the actual placement of those pins on the symbol when you import this symbol into a new project. So just to see what I mean, I have another project open up over here and you can see here I've searched for uh, this transistor. I can just drag it in here and once I drag it in here, you can already see where the base collector and emitter pins are actually located on this symbol. So just because you've arranged the pins like this in this schematic, it doesn't mean that they are going to appear like this on this symbol. So in order to get those two to match, we actually have a couple of different properties here that we have to work with. So if I just click on the base terminal and I look over here in the right side of the screen, you'll see that there's a position property. So this X and Y coordinate tells you where in this document this pin is visible. So for example, if I were to change this to, um, let's say uh, negative 120, you can see that it already moved over. So I'll just undo that and it'll get put back in the original position. Now, if I scroll down to the properties area, you can see here that there is a symbol pin position. So this symbol pin position tells you where this pin will sit on this symbol in relation to the coordinate system that is used to define this SVG image. So that's very important because you need to get that information from your SVG editor when you're creating this custom symbol. 
Same thing goes for the other two pins. So if I select this other pin, you can see here that I've got a position property up here that defines the position inside this schematic, just this position right here. But then I have another property down here, that's the symbol pin position. So if I want to get these pins to line up in this schematic, that's actually pretty easy. What I can do is I can, of course, copy these, or I can drag in a new terminal. And when I drag in that new terminal, I can get these to line up just by dragging like this. You'll see here that when these two terminals get close to each other, that red line will appear. And so it'll allow me to align them horizontally. Um, if I want to, I can then set a specific vertical spacing. So here you can see that this is 40.8. Let's say I want this to be 50.8. I just type in 50.8 and it will appear right here. So I can do that so on and so forth for as many pins as I want in this symbol. So that's how you get these pins to line up in the schematic area. Now you're gonna do something similar if you want to create, say, a symbol for an integrated circuit and you want to get those pins to line up around that symbol when you create your SVG. So for that, we're gonna to have to jump into Inkscape or some other SVG editor in order to create the symbol. And then once we have that symbol, we can then line up the components around it so that they appear in the order we want. Now we're gonna show how to do this with an SVG file, but you could also do this with a DXF file. So you're not limited to SVG only. So if you wanna use a DXF file, um, you could do this in something like LibreCAD, or you could do it in AutoCAD. If you're gonna use an SVG file, you could use the tool that we're going to use for this demo, which is Inkscape. Now, when you first start creating a custom symbol, one thing that you will notice is that uh, you need to add some assets into this part in order to add in the custom symbol. So the custom symbol is not drawn out here in the schematic area. You actually add in this custom symbol by adding in an asset to the part. And in fact, if you look at another component that has a custom symbol like this transistor we were looking at, you'll see here in the assets area that there are a few different assets. So we have a KiCad footprint that's been added in. We have, of course, the custom symbol right here, which is an SVG file. And then we have a step file for a 3D model. So what we can do is once we have this SVG file created, uh, we can then uh, place these pins around that SVG file. So that way they will appear in the right locations when this symbol is dragged into this project. Now, one thing I've done over here is I've started to create a new symbol for a component, and I've just taken these two pins and kind of placed them arbitrarily. Um, so it doesn't really matter where we have them in this schematic. Now, normally, if we were to just place these pins and then publish this straight away and add it into a new project, this is what this uh, new symbol would look like when we drag it into the new project. So you can see here, it just kind of, uh, you know, in a default arrangement, placed these pins around this symbol. So this symbol is just totally default. And these two pins are placed because, you know, frankly, the system had to place them somewhere. So these two locations work just fine. Um, typically, if you were doing a custom symbol, you might place all of your inputs on one side, all of your outputs on another. That's one common way to format symbols, um, especially for integrated circuits. Another way to do this is to actually write out the pin numbers in a counterclockwise direction. So that way it matches the pad arrangement in the footprint. That's also common for integrated circuits. So in this case, we would instead have them numbered as one, two, three, four, five, six, and so on and so forth. So in order to get this custom symbol into this part, what we need to do is first create it from an SVG file in Inkscape. Now I could do this as a DXF file, but for now I'm gonna do this in Inkscape. So it's important to note that the position of this pin relative to any of the edges in this symbol is actually not defined relative to the edges. The position is defined relative to the center of everything in this drawing. So all of this stuff. Now what I've done here is I've used a little trick and I've put a little dot here in this drawing in Inkscape. So this little dot is set right at the center of everything that we see here in this drawing. 
So what I want to do is first make sure that I'm set to pixels. And once I'm set to pixels, I can see exactly how far this edge is from this dot. So you can see up here in the X coordinate that this edge is 48.895 pixels away from the center. Now, once I know that distance, I would then be able to set the X coordinate for one of these pins if I wanted it to line up along one of these edges. I could do the same kind of thing here for this diagonal edge. If I wanted to say or orient one of the pins vertically and set it uh, here along this edge, I could do that. I would just need to know uh, this distance from here to the center to, these, uh, to this point on the diagonal line. So what I'm going to do is just line the pins up along this edge and they're going to hit exactly along this edge just to keep things simple. So first I need this number and then I can use this to set the X coordinate for the pins along this edge. So to do that, I need to go back in here to my drawing and then I need to use the symbol pin position property. So I want to set this to negative 48.895. And then I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to set this to negative 48.895. Pretty simple. Now you'll note here that the symbol pin position and the position up here in this part of the canvas can be different. So this position 05 is just the position inside this drawing space in the schematic editor. Whereas symbol pin position is the actual position where this pin will appear when it's added onto the symbol. So just like we did for the x-coordinate, we can do the same for the y-coordinate. So I know that the distance from here to the top edge of the drawing area is 30.85 pixels. So if I wanted to set the pin equidistance between this center point and this uh, horizontal line in the drawing space in Inkscape, I would want to set its y-coordinate to about 15. So we can go ahead and do that now on the symbol pin position property. So here for the top pin, you can see it's already set to 15. And then if we want to set the other pin 15 below this center point, we would just set the second pin to negative 15. And you can see that's already done here. So sometimes the Y positions for the position in the drawing and the position for the pin don't match. That's okay, you don't have to make them match. What's important is these numbers when assigning to a symbol, because these numbers will define where this pin actually appears on the symbol when you place this symbol into a new project. So now that we've done this and we have our pin positions assigned, we can go back here into Inkscape and we can just delete this little center dot since we don't need it and go ahead and save. And now we're ready to add this in as an asset to our part. So if you've never used Inkscape to create SVG files, I'm going to link to a resource in, in the Flux documentation. Um, in that resource, you'll see a tutorial for using Inkscape to create SVG files and how to add them to parts as a symbol. Now that we have uh, created the symbol, we can exit out of Inkscape and then we can add that symbol into our part as an asset. So if we go down to the assets area, open the manage assets dialog, click add item, navigate to the symbol, and then we, will, we can go ahead and open it. Now, once it's opened, you'll see it gives it the ID of symbol because I've named it symbol.svg. We can go ahead and hit done. And now we're ready to publish the changes to the library. So once we publish these changes to the library, we can then include this part in a new project. Thanks for watching this tutorial, everybody. Make sure to check out the link in the description to learn more about creating parts. And of course, make sure to subscribe to the channel and you'll be able to keep up with all of our tutorials and updates as they come out. Thanks again, everybody, and make sure to hop in the flux and have a look.